One of the primary purposes of PHP is to handle forms and form submissions. You know, like contact forms, subscribe forms, search forms, login forms, so on and so forth. In order to collect the data from those forms, we need to use the built-in PHP methods called get and post. Get and post are essentially variables that store an associative array with the form data that was submitted. They are called superglobals, which means the data within these variables can be accessed anywhere from your website, application, scripts, so on and so forth, without having to perform any special functions or tricks to get that data. So let's take a quick look at the get method. Start up a page here, get underscore post.php. You know the drill, copy and paste, follow along. You can pull it from the course files folder. As long as you got the basic structure here, you could define the title and do all that good stuff. I assume at this point, you know what's up. So I'm not gonna have to go through all that sort of stuff every time. Okay, here we are in the body and we're gonna start off by just building a simple form. So I'm gonna remove this PHP script here. I don't need it yet. I'm gonna build a simple form. And before I put any extra information here, I'm just gonna put the basic structure and then fill out the attributes here. So type, text, uh, this is gonna be placeholder name, let's just keep it simple. And the name attribute, I'm gonna call it name. This is important because we're gonna be using it. Type, this one will be text, placeholder, email, and then name will be email. This input will be the submit button, so type submit. And the name, this is important as well, I'm gonna call it form submit. And now the form action, we're going to say form underscore get.php. We haven't really done this yet because, uh, well now we're gonna be talking about the get and post collections or methods. And so basically what the action does is when you submit the form, the action tells PHP where to submit that form data. And we'll talk about that in a sec. Now the method, is get. So we have action form underscore gets. So we're going to submit the form data to form get. And I mean, you can call it whatever you want. It could just be called submit.php, hello.php. It's just the PHP page that we're going to set up here in a directory. The method we're going to call get. So when the user fills out this form and clicks submit, the form data is sent to the PHP file, uh, file called form get. And you could also submit the data to your current page that you're on, but we'll get into that a little bit later because there's a bit more details involved. So in this example, the data is gonna be sent via the get method. Then we need to create a page called form underscore get .php, because that's where it's gonna send that data. I'm just gonna put basic structure here, nothing fancy, just HTML and body tags. And then in here, is where we can spit out or display the content or the data from the get method that you submitted to this page. So we'll say, um, hello, PHP echo. Now I'm gonna uh, reference the get method here. So this is how you get it right here, no pun intended. And I'm going to say name. So basically it's, it's storing the array and we need to grab the data from that array and because we called the name of this input over here, input type name equals name, that's going to get us the, the value from that input. So name, close that PHP script, I'm gonna put a break tag, and I'm gonna say your email is PHP, and then I'm just gonna say email, and there we go. So now, let me just show you here how this works. I'm gonna save both ends here and we're gonna view it in the browser. So here we have our basic form, name, email, submit. I'm gonna type in my name, you're at email.com, submit. Submits to form underscore get.php. Hello Brad, your email is you're at email.com. Pretty cool. Now you might've noticed right here, tagged or tacked onto the end of the, the URL address bar, we have a query string that says, name equals brad and email equals your email.com you're at email.com and then form submit equals submit so i'll talk about that in a moment but first before we get there i'm going to give you a little brief overview on how post works so post the is the other way of collecting form data and it uses what's called the post method so let's duplicate this form and i'm going to change a few things here let's change uh, 
the action to form underscore post. So we could submit it to a different, uh, a different page and then method equals post. We're going to have to change some of these things as well. Um, just to be unique, let's just say post underscore name and then post underscore email. And let's just say post underscore submit just to change the, the name attributes there. Okay. So now let's create a page called form underscore post dot PHP because it has to have a page to submit to. And then same deal. We're going to just, I'm going to copy. So form underscore get, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it in here, but change the get method to post. And that's just going to, and of course we need to change the, the names here. So this is going to be post underscore name and post underscore email. So save now refresh your page. So now we have two forms. Obviously, uh, they don't, they're not very user friendly. We don't know which one's which, but we, we should know that because we coded it. Brad, brad at email.com submit. It's going to send me to form underscore post .php. Hello, Brad, your email is brad at email.com. They both did the same thing on the front end. It's on the back end where things are different. You could see here, there is no query string with all that data. So what is the difference between the get and post methods? Well, both get and post return an associative array of values. Um, basically, the form data is automatically added to a key value pair in an associative array and stored in either the get or post collection, depending on which method you used in your form, obviously. The data sent to those collections would look something like this. So I'm just going to give you a quick array, just as an example, just to show you what the data would look like. So basically, it's going to store data that will come in the form of this. Very simple, but you can see the key is basically the key name is the same as the attribute value that you set within your form. And that's on purpose so that you can access it when you're calling the get or post method, like we did in form underscore get or form underscore post, the post name, post email. Those are the name uh, attributes, the value of those name attributes. And so that's stored in the associative array like this. And then the value is here. And that's what the user input in the form itself. Now the difference between the two, basically with get, the data is submitted via URL parameters, which we saw in the address bar when we submitted a form right here. There is the form data. And because of this, you should never use the get method to send sensitive data, like passwords, credit card numbers, uh, home addresses, or something like that. Only use the get method to submit data that isn't sensitive, like a search form, for example. If you were to search your website, you'll be able to submit it this way, and, um, and then it's okay if it's visible up here. It might even work well because you can actually use the navigation the history. So now I can go forward. You see how it actually uh, saved that information in the URL bar. Could be useful. With the post method, the data is sent via an HTTP request and is not actually visible to users. So you can't see it up here. And you could send a more sensitive data over your form submissions like passwords uh, and usernames and so on and so forth. Which brings me to another topic, security. It's very important to validate and clean, sanitize your form data that you submit to ensure that the form data that is being collected is handled securely. Once you start implementing PHP forms on your sites and applications, you begin to open yourself and your users up to uh, vulnerability and security exploits um, by hackers. I could create a totally separate course based around form validation and security, but I'll walk you through some basic form validation to get you started. So let's create another form here. I'm just going to remove this PHP script. It was just an example. Uh, but we're going to submit the data to our current page. Remember I told you earlier in this lecture, we're going to, uh, I'm going to show you how to submit the data to the same page you're on. The reason why you'd want to do that is because you can display errors within the same page as your form, instead of going to a totally separate page, you can keep, you can validate and uh, do some error handling right on your page without sending them anywhere. And so let's start off by, I'm going to copy this out and let's put some break tags in between, or maybe a horizontal rule just to space them out a little bit. And why don't we just put a level four heading? I'm going to say, do another one here, submitted via post. And then down here, we're going to say, submitted to current page. Okay. 
Now, basically what we do here is change the action to a little bit of PHP. You can put PHP within your HTML. Echo, HTML special chars for characters. And this little bit of PHP is also a super global variable, kind of like get and post, uh, which lets us um, display the current file name of the page that we're on. So you don't have to hand code or hard code that. And then I'm gonna close that with semicolon right there and method post. Now, the HTML special chars PHP function will basically remove HTML characters from the form data, and this will help discourage hackers by preventing them from injecting HTML or JavaScript into the form data, which they can actually do to uh, inject malware, redirect the user elsewhere, and manipulate your site, database, forms, so on and so forth. It's something you don't want to do. So this is a good first line of defense, wrapping the server PHP self with the HTML special chars function. So now that we've done that, we're going to do a little bit of validation, some basic form validation to ensure that the user has um, input appropriate data into the form, and meaning they didn't leave it empty. Go to the top. So we're going to start by using if, and then we're going to use the is set function, and that's going to check to see if the post collection is available, specifically form submit. So if, if that's the case, it's basically going to check to see if form submit is set, which means the form has been submitted, which therefore means we can start playing with the form data. So we're going to start by build a function that validates the data so that we can use this, uh, basically build a function once and use it multiple times instead of typing it out over and over and over again. We're going to call it validate form data, and it's going to accept an argument. So we're going to add the parameter here, form data. So basically, you can pass in the form data that the user is going to type in right into this function, which we'll do shortly. So form data equals, and we're going to do a whole bunch of PHP functions right here all in one line. So trim, inside trim, strip slashes, and inside strip slashes, we'll do HTML special chars. So now in here is where I'll put the form data variable. And then I'll end that with a semicolon. Basically, this is just a shorthand way of adding a whole bunch of PHP functions and wrapping it around a single variable. I could have done this all in separate lines, but this just keeps it all in one line and uh, works just fine. Now we want to return form data variable so that we can access it outside of this function so it's a little bit more global. Now what we're going to do is check to see if inputs are empty. Then we're going to create variables with the form data. Then we will wrap the data with our function that we just built. So let's start off by checking to see if not post and name. Basically this says if the post collection uh, and the, the name attribute or the value of name is empty. So this basically just means if it's empty, it's just a quick shorthand way. Then what we're going to do is create a variable called name error. And then we'll just put some text. Please enter your name and then a break tag. Okay, so then we're gonna use else, using our if statements here, name equals post name, and then we'll wrap that in our custom function, validate form data. Now I wanna make sure here I noticed that I actually typed this wrong. This needs to be form data, not form date. Make sure you change that if you copied me exactly verbatim. So here we go, so if post name is empty, then uh, add this text to the name error variable so that we can use later else add the form data from this input into this variable so that we can use it we're going to do this one more time just change a couple things around for our email input so if post email that's empty please enter your email validate form data we're just going to change this to email validate form data this will be email and make sure name error has been changed to email error. That's pretty much it for the PHP. Basically, it's going to check to see if the form has been submitted. We're going to set out our function here that's going to trim and strip slashes and HTML special characters. Basically, takes out slashes, trims up any white space, and uh, removes any uh, special characters. Then it's going to check to see if the inputs are empty, uh, enter some text to a, an error variable. Otherwise, it's going to store that the correct information that has been sanitized in the name variable and ditto with the email, got the email error, otherwise it's gonna go into the email variable, which we can now use down here. I'm just going to put a little extra stuff here. P uh, I'm gonna put a 
paragraph tag with a class of text dash danger asterisk. I'm going to say required fields just to let users know that uh, anything with the asterisk is required. And then inside uh, our form here, I'm just going to add some more HTML. I'm going to add a small tag. It's going to have the class of text dash danger. That's a bootstrap class asterisk and then PHP inside our PHP script here. I'm going to say echo name error. Copy that. And I'm going to change, uh, paste it above the email one, and I'm going to change this to email error. And so why don't we do one last thing under the form here? I'm going to do another PHP script, and this is going to basically show me the data that we submitted. So if is set again, we're going to see if the post collection form underscore submit is available. If so, echo, and then I'm just going to say, uh, I'm going to put this on another line, echo, name, break tag. And then when we do another one here, email break tag, semicolon, save that. Now let's go check it out in our browser. So here we have submitted via get, submitted via post, submitted to current page. You can see required fields. We have two asterisks here. Let's go ahead and submit an empty form. And looks like something's not working. Um, now let's go back to our PHP here and let's just make sure that our submit when we're checking to see if is set form submit. So let's make sure that our form input is actually called that. So here we have our form and there we go. There's a problem. We called it post submit. So let's copy that and make sure again here, this needs to say post submit as well because it's checking for the wrong form and then go up to the top. Let's make sure everything we have is good. There we go, so post submit. But because we changed the names of those form inputs, we need to make sure that these are correct. So if post name, we actually had it, had all these form names, the attributes be post underscore and then name and email. So we need to change that. So this says post name, post name. This will be post email and post email. That should be good. That was a big mistake. Uh, and I wanted you to see that because that stuff happens all the time and you need to know how to fix it. So now we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and refresh this page or hit in the address bar and hit return because if you hit refresh while you, after you submitted a form, it's gonna ask to resubmit that form. So submit an empty form here. Please enter your name, please enter your email. Uh, that technically worked. And your info, it's giving me empty info. I'm just gonna do a little bit of um, clean up here. So go to your form and put a couple break tags or a break tag after and same with the second one. Actually, that is the form input uh, submit button. Now we should be good to go. There we go. Now let's submit an empty form. There we go. So please enter your name. Please enter your email because they're empty. So why don't we try doing this? Please enter your email. Now let's try doing both. Brad, brad at email.com. Submit it from the form, and then we have, if you enter empty forms, it'll give you some form error handling. So that's get and post, uh, submitting data via the get and post methods, and also submitting to the current page with some basic security and form validation. See you in the next lecture. <laughs>